What's the hardest thing about being a mom? The hardest thing about being a mom is trying to figure out what is the choice to make with anything regarding parenting. Because there's like no exact way to do anything. There's no like rule book. I mean, there probably are rule books, but you don't know which one to follow. It's so stressful because you are trying and you want the best, but you have no idea what the right answer is. What advice would you give me to being a better mother? Um, what advice would I give you? I would give you um, care more about being a role model. We, we complain to each other a lot about, you know, be on time here or be on time there. <laughs> and, and like, you'll, you'll really get on my case about being late and then you feel really upset when I do the same back to you. So it's like, you know, don't, don't make me feel like so much crap when I only have you to, you know, to you to look, to see how you do. <laughs> look at to me as an example, right? Yes, and, and, when I, and when I told you that, you told me I don't have to be an example. And that really, like, just that confused me and it hurt me. Because I feel like a mother needs to be an example to their children, because if not, like, who else is gonna be there? Who else is gonna set examples for them? The world, and that's dangerous. Yeah, I mean, you gotta get your examples wherever you can, because everyone does, I mean, you pick, you pick and choose. You're like going through a garden and you're picking the flowers and leave the weeds behind. That's what you have to do. I mean, if I used my mother as a role model, you know, I would have ended up worse than I am. <laughs> I guess, when you were my age, what scared you the most? When I was your age, okay, so. Mm -hmm. You're 26. What scared me the most? That was. We had both of us already. <laughs> I know. Uh, and you were six, and Snook was two, and that was right when I first moved to New York. Um, I was scared that I would kill myself, pretty right. much, because that was around the time when I was really, really depressed, and I didn't even want to wake up. Like, Why were you so depressed? Because I had no friends, no life. It was just like I was always having to be home and take care of you guys. And I loved you, but like I had no You're friends. Real. I just moved to New York and I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a job yet. And it just was like such isolation. And I, I mean, I used to have like severe depression, but I don't anymore. Thank goodness I just, it went away. You know, so, and it used to come and go until just maybe 10 years ago. For the last 10 years, I've never, it never popped into my head. Now I'm like, nothing's that bad, you know? Good. But I used to get really depressed, and that's what used to scare me. <laughs> um, my turn. Where do you think we misunderstand one another? The line, the line of respect, I guess. That's what I think too. Like you get, you feel disrespected when I don't mean any disrespect. Yeah, like that's such a big thing for you. You always talk about respect. It's like, please don't assume I don't respect you. I do respect you. And I show it in many ways, but you always fixate on, you're always like looking for signs of me disrespecting you. It's like you're looking for it. You're like hoping to catch me disrespecting you. That's what it feels like. It's like, I don't disrespect you. I think you're amazing and I have so much respect for you. So try to look for that. What moment or moments do you feel I let you down and how do you feel about it now? Basically, I feel like when I was younger, you could have helped out a lot more with school and you didn't really handle the school thing that well, I feel like if you would have, instead of just yelling at me to do my homework or just like punishing me when I didn't do my homework or didn't do this or didn't do that or whatever, I feel like if you would have just helped me, like, and, and, I, and I do remember asking for your help and you used to tell me, oh, I don't know, I went to school years ago, I don't know that stuff, they're teaching you that now, figure it out, look in the book. I was so horrible in school and I was always getting punished for being horrible in school and like, I love school. 
Like, I always did love school. I just, it was always the homework. I didn't want to let my teachers down by, by getting things wrong or like by, I, I would just be frustrated with being confused and then I wouldn't do it. And then the next day I wouldn't want to see the teacher because I didn't do it. So I wouldn't want to disappoint the teacher not having what I need to have. So like, I felt like it was a, it was like spiraling out of control as I got older and older. And you know why I did that? Because I felt like you were being lazy because I thought you should be able to handle it yourself. Because I did. I went to school, I paid attention, I did my homework. None of my parents ever, not once, lifted a finger to help me with my homework. And I was able to do it. So if I was able to do it, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do it. That was my logic. So I, I resented the fact that, I, that the universe would force me to do something that, I, that nobody did for me. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So it's that. like basically, I didn't get this as a kid, so now I'm not gonna give this to my kids. I didn't get this as a kid, so I'm not giving this to my kids. My kids don't deserve it because I didn't get it. I'm just gonna make my kids' life shitty because my, I had a shitty childhood. So at least if I buy them a few like name brand things, maybe they won't be able to say that they had a shitty, shitty childhood like me. Not That's quite. what I get from that. Well, not quite to that extent. Basically, I have been a single parent for 26 years mm -hmm. with three deadbeat dads. Mm -hmm. No help. Financially, emotionally, It's like nothing. your parents didn't help you. <laughs> right. So it's like really tiring. You can't even imagine how exhausting that is. I like, can't. To yeah. be going through life and raising and being responsible for human beings and you're supposed to like do all this for them and they rely on you for everything and it's like oh my God, I gotta make sure you eat and you don't starve, you know? And then it's like, okay, well, this one I can let it slide because I can't do everything. You know, and you have to pick and choose. And sometimes the reason why I feel, and the reason why I'm not at more like sympathetic for you is because I see people doing it every day way better. I told you that I decided when I was pregnant with you that I was not gonna do my best as a mom. That was a decision I made. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do a pretty good job, but I'm not gonna do my best because I'm a kid, and at least I'm not killing her by having an abortion. So at least she's gonna be alive. I'm gonna love her to death. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna sacrifice my life for, I mean, I would, like, I would die for you, but I'm not gonna live for you. I decided that when I was pregnant. And I was like, there's gonna be decisions that I make going along the way where I'll be like, I'm sacrificing this, that's okay, I'll do that for her. This, you know what? Nah, I'm not doing that. So what do you feel like you sacrificed for me?